live. Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I feel like this week has been flying by. I don't know about you guys, but my week has sure been going by so fast that I cannot believe it's Monday. And it's also May 1st, which is also crazy for me to believe. I feel like where did the month of April go? It went by so fast. Um, but anyways, for those of you that are just are tuning in, um, if you've never met me or seen me or watched any of my videos before, my name is Kayla. I'm a registered dietitian, and I specialize in plant-based eating specifically for endurance runners, um, as I am myself and have been for the last couple of years. So anyways, on this video today, I wanted to talk about dairy, which I know is a very controversial topic, um, but I thought it would be a really good topic to talk about and really um, help you guys to get through all that information that's out there and really look at the evidence and what are these studies showing. And even looking at the studies and the evidence, it is still a little confusing. Um, but um, hopefully this video will help you to decide whether you think it's a good idea um, to give up dairy or not. Um, and, you know, give you guys some ideas and tips and learn too if you decide maybe dairy is not good for me and I shouldn't eat so much dairy or limiting it. But, you know, if you're concerned about maybe not getting enough calcium in your diet, I'll talk about that too. So, that's what this video is going to be about. So if you are somebody that is, you uh, know, plant-based, um, that maybe, or maybe I should say, maybe that you're, if you are plant-based, you may not eat dairy. So maybe this isn't even something that may really concern you. Um, or maybe you're just confused or unsure of how to get enough calcium. So this video could help too, or if you're somebody that is new to plant-based eating um, and kind of on the fence about, you know, what should I give up dairy or not? How do I give up dairy? I'm not quite sure if I can do that. Um, I really love cheese and really love ice cream. And believe me, guys, I'm with you. I totally get it. Um, it is very hard. I won't sugarcoat it. It is not easy to do because especially where I live and, you know, maybe the same for the communities that you guys live in. Um, but I know for the community that I live in, it seems very difficult to not eat dairy. Um, whenever I go out to eat, there's always dairy. There's always cheese on everything. If you go to an Italian restaurant, um, right, there's ice cream places that have just opened up. It's May. It's getting warmer. Everyone's going out to ice cream and it's just, you know, I see, I have an ice cream place actually right down the street from where I live. And they are crazy busy since they have opened up every single day. I cannot believe how many people go. Larry did stop in and they have a lot of ice cream flavors, but people love their ice cream. Um, even I know my mom and dad love their ice cream and will sit down and have a half a cup of ice cream. They limit it, but they still have that treat um, almost every night. <laughs> that is something that they absolutely enjoy. So I totally get it. I enjoy my ice cream too. Um, but to get into it a little bit, so dairy. So as I said in the beginning intro of this video, it is a very, um, something that is very controversial, right? Um, I will, you know, go back to my, back to the USDA recommendations, right? To our my plate. that is our, um, the USDA comes out with recommendations, right, to help guidelines to help Americans eat healthier. So um, the program that I work for full time, as many of you guys probably know, it is funded through the USDA. So the guidelines um, that I teach and that I teach my nutrition educators are the guidelines that are created by the USDA. And if many of you are familiar with the MyPlate, the my plate actually has a cup of dairy. Um, but what I think is interesting is actually Harvard Public of Health, they created their own plate, um, healthy, they call it a healthy living plate. Um, so it's very similar to my plate, but they actually placed that dairy cup with a cup of water. 
Um, now I want to explain a little bit why I think that has happened and this is more of my interpretation, my opinion of that um, too. But um, the the Dairy Council has a could have a lot to do with it, right? Because you know there are a lot of studies now that are out there actually showing that you know dairy used to be considered something that was you know very beneficial um, because it has so many nutrients that are good for you. So that includes um, calcium, which is huge, right? Which everyone knows about dairy to get your calcium, right? So calcium, vitamin D, phosphorus, vitamin K. I mean, there is so many, you know, nutrients that are in dairy that we need. Um, but what the negative part of that is, that's high in saturated fat. So the USDA does say um, and does recommend it low fat. The thing is, um, back to what I was saying, was now there's so, you know, so many studies out there um, against dairy and saying, you know, there's a lot of negative facts like um, increasing risk of cancer. There's, um, uh, you know, too, even too high intake, intake, they say it could be harmful. That also came from Harvard. It could actually increase the risk of bone fractures. Um, and a lot of people can cause digestive issues. It's also very inflammatory. So if you, you know, have issues with rheumatoid arthritis and things like that, or any inflammatory issues, um, dairy can also not help that, right? So there's a lot of issues and complications around dairy. Um, and right, there's a lot of things that, you know, maybe it's not the best for your body. And um, one thing too that I wanna mention is a lot of people I know are lactose intolerant. And it's actually really common to be lactose intolerant because they don't have that people lose that enzyme and this can even occur later in life, you lose that enzyme lactase to digest lactose. So our bodies, but our bodies have actually been able to genetically modify, which I don't know if that's the right words that I'm using, but now our, our bodies actually modify, yeah, they modify and they change to, to actually digest dairy. Um, but a lot of people still do have issues with digesting that dairy, which I think is a good point. And it's interesting is, well, why are we eating dairy? But Dairy is a, a big industry, right? It's a very big industry, um, just like the beef industry, things like those, you know, consoles, industries, and they have a lot of say into things. Um, so I think that's a really um, re big reason why the USDA still has um, dairy as a recommendation. Um, they do say low fat, as I said, which is good um, because of the saturated fat. And that was one of the big risk of, um, or negative effects of dairy is the saturated fat. Um, but I also think it's interesting, and I think it's also a good point, is to mention that all of all across the lifespan, the recommendation from the USDA is three cups, only three cups of dairy. Um, and I've actually, I teach kids, right? And I've taught a dairy lesson before, and I've actually had them do an activity and add up the amount of dairy in dairy foods. And I realized they, you know, our main source of calcium is from dairy foods, right? So that's what we, we associate it with. But for kids, they actually need more, um, and they need 1,300 milligrams of calcium a day. And they can't get all their calcium from dairy if they're only limited to three cups a day. And there's research that says that too much is harmful. Well, either way, whether you completely don't eat dairy or you do eat dairy, you still need to know about foods that have calcium in them that are not dairy sources, right? Um, so I think it's interesting too is that you know, even though dairy is still on the my plate and is still a main food group, um, it's still limited. It's still something that we know and is said that we should not have too much of it, um, whether it's low fat or not. So I think that's a really interesting point too. And you can't even get all of your calcium from those three cups. So 
what are all our foods? I think it's also important to say, okay, if I can't have dairy, if I have an allergy, if I have a lactose intolerance, if I want to go plant-based, well, what are those foods that I can, you know, incorporate more into my diet to make sure I get enough calcium, if you're concerned about that, right? So certainly eating more plant-based foods that have higher calcium, right? So your leafy greens, right? Your kale, your spinach, um, your broccoli, your tofu, almonds. Um, so almond milk is a good source of calcium, excuse me. Black beans and then also um, blackstrap molasses, which is something that I normally um, don't have, but um, I have bought in this just because um, doing some of the research that I've been doing <laughs> that has been coming up with having these nutrients as a good source for plant people that are plant-based. So I have that on there. Um, you know, I have that as something that I'm still trying to figure out how do I incorporate this though into my diet? What can I make with this? What can I do with it? Right. Um, so that's always the struggle with kind of trying different foods and incorporating different foods into your diet. You may have not had before, but you know, um, are nutrient dense and have nutrients in them that you need. So what else can you do? Exercise is also very important um, because, you know, exercise, especially bone strengthening exercises, so running, jumping, anything like that, basketball, all those exercises are going to actually help strengthen your bones. Um, so that's important for bone health. Supplement with vitamin D for your concern, especially during the winter months. We may not get enough sun, may not be outside enough to really get vitamin D from the sun. So that can help too. Um, and then what was the other thing that I want to talk about? Oh, I know what it was. Um, how do you stay away from the dairy then? If you decide, well, maybe I want to try this. Maybe for two weeks I'll try, you know, limiting, like giving up dairy, kind of see how I feel. Um, because you may even notice the differences. If you give up diet dairy totally for two weeks, um, your body may feel different. Um, and it's a good it's a good thing to do even for anyone i think to really just see if it if it makes a difference or not um for me it's been so long and i will say that i'm not that strict with dairy um I try to stay away from it as much as I can, but I know going out to eat has been really hard. Um, limiting dairy or eating at other places or at other people's houses. Um, and sometimes I've even just accidentally ate it. Um, you know, I'm like, oh, oh well, like I'm not gonna make a big deal about it kind of thing. Um, the other thing is that cross-contamination. So a lot of times when I picked up products, it says may contain milk. Um, and sometimes, you know, you could argue whether that's truly vegan or not. Um, but I think it's really it depends on the person. If you're somebody that's allergic to milk, then yes, you should not eat that product, right? If it says it contains milk. Um, but if you're someone that's just trying to like limit, um, limit dairy in your diet, but it's not like a big issue if it could be contaminated or not, then maybe it's not such a big deal, right? So it really kind of depends. Um, that really depends, but um, it, it can be hard, right? But there are um, dairy um, alternatives, which is great, which has really helped me. And I think that really helps people to transition to, um, and, and they may not really taste the same, but, um, they are getting better. Like vegan cheeses. I know the first time I had a vegan cheese, I thought, oh, this is absolutely disgusting. There's no way I'm going to be able to give up dairy. This is terrible. How am I ever going to eat cheese again? Um, because I used to absolutely love cheese. Um, but the thing is, is that cheeses are getting better. Um, I've had the cheese that's a lot better that I use for toasted cheese, um, tomato soup. That's just one of my go-to meals that I really like. And I actually really um, liked it. So they are getting better with vegan cheeses and the producers that are making them because there's more of a high demand, um, which even shows that it's it's getting to be more common for people to actually go uh, be dairy-free and be staying away from dairy. 
Um, almond milk. There's so many nut milks out there. I actually just heard there's also oat milk. So I don't know if anyone's tried that before, which I thought was really interesting. But now there's coconut milk, there's almond milks, um, rice milk. It really depends on your preference, what you prefer kind of thing. Um, some of them might, you know, not have as much calcium or other nutrients as other ones. Almond um, milk does have calcium. Um, coconut, I know, does too. Um, because my coconut yogurt, I usually get coconut yogurt, um, coconut almond yogurt, and I know my coconut yogurt does have some calcium in that. Um, and then your vegan cheeses, also about vegan cheeses, uh, if you're looking for that to have calcium, it may not have calcium in it. So not all your dairy alternatives um, that you think of alternatives are going to have dairy in them. Um, like the ice cream that I make, it's more of like a frozen dessert, like bananas and berries. So it's really fruit. So there's no calcium in there. Um, so not all those things are going to have calcium, but like I said, those other foods, um, just being aware of it and eating more of those foods can help you to get more calcium in your diet. And you might have to eat more food. Um, I know for me, that's, it's still a struggle, really. Um, but eating enough foods that I need to get the nutrients that I need from the foods that I eat, um, because there's, there may be less of, an, um, the less amount of, you know, a portion of something else, right? So when I eat um, a cup of black beans and a cup of cheese, we'll say, um, they're going to have, black beans will probably have less calcium in them for that cup of cheese, right? So I'm going to have to eat a lot more black beans to get the same amount of calcium in that one cup of cheese, right? So it can be a little bit harder because you may have to eat more food. And I know that's something that I still struggle with um, is eating enough um, to get the nutrients that I need. But supplements, as I said, um, are an option. Um, they're, of course, not the first option, but definitely an option. And if, you know, you're thinking maybe that's something you should do, um, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to a nutrition professional, um, especially I do want to emphasize someone that is a registered dietitian. Um, and if they specialize in plant-based, they may better able to help you too, because they um, will understand, you know, what you, what nutrients, not just what nutrients you need, but can understand kind of where you're coming from and that you know, not trying to push you to, oh, just eat dairy or just eat meat kind of thing. So that can um, help a little, that can help a lot. Um, so that's really important. Um, is there anything else? I think I pretty much hit almost every point that I wanted to hit, which is awesome. Oh, another point I wanted to hit because some of you um, may be endurance runners like I am milk um doesn't benefit sports performance and i found this source this was from let me look this up i can post some of these resources that i looked at um that i'm got some of this information from which are resources that i have gotten or that i look at um highly um uh, doctors that are that are plant based. They're, I think most of them are doctors, but um, I look up to them very highly. Um, so Mark Hyman, he's a plant based doctor. Um, he had um, that, or he said that um, milk does it benefit sports performance, which was really um, interesting to me because I know um, when I've been in cross country involved in sports. Um, chocolate milk right was always that thing to have afterwards and then i know the dairy council had that big campaign um with those milk mustaches right those kind of things so there's association um with dairy and sports performance but i think that's really interesting that now um more evidence is showing that it does not um actually benefit um and he does say milk um doesn't say dairy but says milk does it benefit sports performance. But um, if you're interested in learning more about that or wanting more research, I can certainly do more research on that for you um, to really see where that information is coming from. Um, but I just thought that was really interesting and wanted something to mention that 
Um, and certainly, you know, I do want to mention like, you know, if you're somebody that wants to eat more plants, but maybe you're not ready to give up dairy, or maybe you don't think dairy really causes you an issue or affects you in any way negatively. Um, and you're, you know, maybe you're not worried about those other, other negative effects of dairy and you don't believe that and that's okay. Um, but I think it's good to understand the evidence, the facts, where the information really is. And yes, I will say that there, you know, there is conflicting studies and evidence, um, especially with dairy and bone health. Um, some studies, you know, it was, you know, show that it improves bone health, but then there's other studies they're saying now that it decreases bone health, right? So, or increases your risk of um, bone fracture. So there are conflicting studies um, and it really boils down and digs deep into how are those studies done, right? Were these effective studies, those kind of things, um, how, you know, how they were created, the limitations, all those things. So it can be really complicated um, to just take those studies and figure out conclusions and you know, base things on those studies, right? So it is very controversial. I know that, <laughs> um, but I really want to do um, a video on dairy. And um, as I said, I'm not someone that, you know, even though I am mainly plant-based and that's what I've been promoting and preach a lot, um, but I've been saying now that I'm, you know, plant-based um, and mainly plant-based because, as I said, I'm not perfect, um, and I also don't believe in having a very restrictive diet. Um, and you know, I've gotten out of the word saying saying vegan because there's just so much connotation around it that I felt guilty and I felt like I shouldn't be um, because it sounds so restrictive. And there's so many ethical things that come around being vegan, right? So I you know, changed my verbiage a little bit in talking about being mostly, mainly plant-based um, because that's really what it is. I'm, I'm not that strict when I pick up items and they say, then they make a tain milk, like, oh, it's okay. Like, <laughs> as far as I know, I've never had an issue with dairy, but since I don't eat it a lot, really minimally um, and maybe only once a month, if that, that I don't even know if it really does have an effect on me or changes my body. But I do know, you know, some of the evidence that has shown um, it is a little bit scary. Um, some of the studies and the evidence and the research, what it says now um, and decided, well, you know, I don't, I can get these, you know, nutrients that comes in dairy from other things without that is saturated fat. Right. So that's kind of where I'm at, and that's what I've decided, you know, just to try to stay away from it as much as I can. Um, but certainly I understand that it's hard um, to make that shift. Um, and also if you're, you're interested in wanting to make that shift and eat less dairy, it certainly can help with that, of course, um, you know, making that um, change. Um, and any change is going to be hard. You know, it's easy to, it's easier to just, you know, take it step by step, you know, just decide, you know, one thing that you're going to work on. Um, when you try to work on so many things at once, it can be very overwhelming, very hard, um, and you're more like, less likely to be successful. So, you know, just take one step at a time, wherever you are. Um, but hopefully this video was helpful. Um, and you may disagree with some things and that's okay too. Like I said, I know this is very controversial. Um, if you are interested in any of the articles or studies that I looked at, I can certainly send those to you. Let me know if you'd be interested in those. Um, let's see if I have any updates for you guys. Um, trying to think if there is anything else I wanted to mention while I'm live here. Um, I don't think there really is. Um, there are things that I've been working on or that I'm planning behind the scenes, but of course, as soon as those things are, you know, as soon as I get those things up and running, I will let you guys know. Um, but thank you guys for all the support as always. Um, for watching my videos, for supporting me, for, you know, sharing anything that I share with other people that absolutely means the world to me to get my name out there to help more people. Um, 
and I do have um, my ebook. Yes, that's what I forgot to mention. I do have um, an ebook of 11 plant based recipes. So if anyone is interested, um, they do, it does, those foods do. Um, those foods are, some of those foods included in there are high in calcium, so those are great foods to, you know, meals to have, some recipes that you can have. Um, I'm giving it away for free. There's no charge, so all I ask is to just send me your email, or you can just sign up. If you go right directly to my website, you can just sign up with your email, and then you can get that ebook. Um, so I hope that many of you, excuse me, if you do have it, have been trying out some of those recipes and using them or um you know just getting more ideas um of eating more plants um i even if you're somebody that's new to plant-based eating i even would challenge you to try one of those meals once a week um and just see if it's making a difference um see if you feel better see if it's really making a difference or not um and I think that's really it. Um, I am taking, oh, one more, of course, <laughs> that I forgot. I can't forget this. Um, I am taking one on my clients for the month of May. So if you are interested, please let me know. If you know anyone that would be interested in working with me um, that may want maybe new to plant-based eating or maybe they're a runner and are just new to plant-based eating or you know, just not sure what to eat or anything like that, um, definitely send them my way and let them know that I work with people, that I'd be glad to work with them and figure out, you know, individualized plan, figure out how to help them and things like that. So anyways, thank you guys all. Thank you for joining. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And before I leave, oh, I should ask if anybody, a couple of you look like you're on. Um, if you're on, let me know, because um, it's hard sometimes to tell. Um, but if you guys, any, if anyone have any questions, let me know. Um, so I see some faces. Does anyone have any questions? Maybe not. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Wait a couple of minutes. But if any of you have any questions, I can answer them. No? Okay, doesn't look like there's any questions. So I think that's it for today. Hope this video, as I said, was helpful. Um, oh, one more thing. <laughs> Last thing, I swear. Um, I do have these videos that I've been doing on Facebook. They are, they do, um, my videos, you can get to my videos. So on Instagram, you can go to my Facebook page and get my my get my get videos, or you can also go to my YouTube channel. So I do have a YouTube channel I'm putting these videos on so you can refer back to them if you're interested in watching them again or sending it to somebody um, and you think it would help, you can get these videos. So just so you guys know, they are going to be up on YouTube. So anyways, I swear that is it. <laughs> have a wonderful Wednesday night and a wonderful rest of your week. Bye.